Hi everybody, welcome back to class. Um, this is the video where we get to build our museum. So my goal in this video is to show you how to assemble and build your art museum by doing three different things. First, I wanna show you how to insert all of your pictures and get them in the right spots and the right sizes in the different rooms throughout the museum. Then I wanna show you how to complete the information slides for each piece. So each art piece has its own information slide I wanna show you how to make. And finally, I wanna show you how to create the curator's office. That's your space where you will get to insert the uh, curator statement that you made during the discussion board uh, and also a picture of yourself next to the curator's desk. So let's get started um, with how to insert pictures. So you should have a museum template that looks just like this. You should have your blank museum slides on the side. You may have gotten started with some uh, already, but either way, this information should still be helpful for you. So for right now, you can ignore these first couple slides. These are just where people will navigate around. There's the curators one. We'll get to that in just a minute. Um, but first, let's go to these empty rooms. Now you have four empty rooms. Room one, room two, room four, and room three. Those are swapped up on the order, but you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, room four is going to stay empty right now because this is where your personal artwork that you make will go in. We're going to make that artwork later in the week, so for right now, leave room four empty. And then underneath the rooms are the individual uh, artwork information slides. Piece one, piece two, exhibit piece three, and you can see that these line up with the paintings. So like this will say exhibit one, exhibit two. Those will link to these. So you want to make sure that you have the same number in the piece when you do the information slide so that they match up. Um, so I'm going to go to room number one. Now I'm going to insert a couple of my artworks here. So let's insert one in this box. Now the link to the information slide, I'm going to present this real quick so it goes full screen. The link to the information slide is these, uh, these words here, or are these words here. So when you click on that, that is what links you to it. So when you insert your picture, you wanna make sure you don't cover those words up. All right, so I'm gonna exit back out so you can see the whole presentation. While I'm on this slide, I'm gonna to go to insert image from my drive, because remember, that's where we saved our artworks at. So I'm gonna click on insert from the drive, and I can see, I guess I'll go back to the beginning here. If you're on your drive, you should be able to find the art classroom. In the art classroom, you can see all of the different periods throughout the day, so you'll pick your period. Like if I click on fourth period, it'll take a second to load these files. You can see all of these students in my fourth period here, so you can find your folder. Um, my example folder is under resources, so I'm gonna grab the teacher folder with the examples, and you can see inside here, I have a couple of examples to use for this um, project. Now remember my theme for my example was splatter paintings, so I found a couple of splatter paintings that fit my criteria. I'm just going to double click on the first one, and you can see this popped up way too big. It takes up the whole room. This is where you've got to resize and just drag things around. I'm just going to move some of these boxes around and make it fit. Now depending on the direction or the size of your artwork, uh, it might not fit perfectly in that box. That's okay if it overlaps a bit. Just do the best you can to make it fit. Your picture might be more vertical than horizontal. That's perfectly fine. Just get it over the box the best you can. And remember not to cover the words up underneath it. So once I've done that, I need to add the name because I don't want it called name of museum piece. So I'm gonna change the name. Um, now I've talked to some of you individually about this, but you may not be able to find a name for your artwork. Depending on what kind of pieces you're finding, they might have titles and they might not. If you cannot find a title, you may give it a name. I know that this painting is called Autumn Rhythm. This is a famous painting by Jackson Pollock. Uh, so I'm going to give it its correct name, Autumn Rhythm. But if you cannot find the names, you just create your own name as you go. And that's it for that painting. Now, this is only for room number one. So after completing that, I need to scroll down through my slides and find the information slide for piece one. Again, make sure these line up. I'm going to insert that same picture here. So I'm going to go to Insert, Image, from Drive. Click on that same picture, Autumn Rhythm. Again, it's way too big, so I'm going to resize this here. Remember, you don't want to cover up your links. The uh, Back to Museum Lobby or Back to Room 1, you want to leave open. So I'm going to uh, add my painting there, and now I'm going to complete the information. So the artist, 
I know is Jackson Pollock, so I can type that name here. Um, and where did you find this artwork? I found it on the Google Arts and Culture site. I'm going to pull that link up, so I'm going to pause the video for just a second while I go find it. Okay, so I found the link where I initially pulled this picture from. Uh, again, you can see that this painting is called Autumn Rhythm. He also titled it number 30, but that doesn't really sound as cool as Autumn Rhythm. Uh, so once I found the link, I'm going to take this URL. I'm going to cut it or copy it either way. And I'm going to paste it down for number two so that I can see where all these artworks came from. I'm going to paste that link there. And then finally, why does this painting belong in your exhibit? Now that's what we talked about in class with all the things uh, that need to be included in the information slide. So I'm going to reference my criteria when I type this out. Um, and I'm going to pause this here so you don't have to watch me type this whole thing. I'll play it in just a second when it's all finished. So I just typed my uh, number three on my information slide. I wrote, I selected this painting for my exhibit because it's a great example of a splatter painting. It was created by throwing paint, giving it a very unique look. I also really liked the combination of colors, so it stood out to me. Finally, I picked this artwork because it is abstract, meaning it doesn't show any recognizable objects. Now, you might find yourself saying the same things over and over when you um, complete these information slides. You may have picked a lot of the paintings for the same reason. So when you get to the number three on each one, this might sound similar as you go through each one, and that's okay. You probably selected those paintings, like I said, for the same reason, so it would make sense to have the same things there. But now that that's completed, I want to go back and show you what that looks like. So I'm going to go to the beginning of my museum and click present. I'm going to go into my museum, into room number one, and here's Autumn Rhythm. And when I click on Autumn Rhythm, it takes me to the Autumn Rhythm information slide. So I can go back to room number one, and I'm back there. Um, now, next to this, I can continue to insert and go to image, go to drive, and select my next painting. This painting was just called number 32. It did not have another name. And you can see that it's vertical, so it's not going to fit quite like I want it to on this wall. Remember, the important thing is that you don't cover up the words. So I'm going to make sure that this is high enough on the wall that I don't cover my words up. And I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. Scoot it over into place. That'll work perfect. I'm going to name this one with its actual name. Again, this painting was called number 32. And again, if you cannot find the names of your artwork, you may name them. So when I present and I click underneath this, it will take me to the blank information slide. Uh, you should know how to fill those out by now, so I'm not going to make you watch me fill out another one. When you complete this, you are going to assemble this for all seven of your artworks, but remember to leave room number four blank. We're going to complete this later in the week when we make our own individual art piece. So you'll include three paintings here that you found two paintings here that you found, which is a total of five, and then two paintings here that you found, bringing you to a total of seven. There you go. My pictures just weren't popping up. All right, so that is how to insert your pictures and how to complete your information slides. The last thing I want to do is show you how to create the curator's office. Slide number three in this Google presentation is the curator's office. Now, this is your space where, in a real museum, visitors would come in to uh, meet you to see what your exhibit's about. This is your area to work. So under curator's name, you want to put your name here. Power. Under insert picture, you do not have to do this. This is not required, but I left this slot here uh, in case you wanted to insert a picture of yourself behind the curator's desk. So I'm going to show you how to. The same way, I'm going to go to insert, image. If you have a picture on your Chromebook, like you just took a picture on your Chromebook, you can go upload to your computer. Uh, you can click camera right here. If I click on camera, it'll bring my camera up. Uh, so you can just take a picture of yourself right here, or you can, if you have one in your drive, you can insert from your drive. I already had one in the drive, so I'm just going to grab this one that was here. I'm going to shrink it down and drop it into place. Again, that's not required. That was just if you wanted to have yourself in the museum. If you don't want yourself there, just delete that box out of there so you don't even have to worry about it. 
And the very last thing is how to create your curator statement. You should already have this created in your discussion board. So I'm going to delete this and I'm going to go back to the discussion board that we should have already completed um, about your curator statement. Now, because I'm doing the sample museum, I'm going to copy my sample answer here. So I'm just going to highlight this. You will find your answers from down below and copy them. So I'm just going to copy that by pressing Control C. I'm going to get back to this box and I'm going to paste it by pressing Control V. And here's my statement. Hi, welcome to my museum. I really think you're going to love it. My name is Mr. Bauer and I'm the curator of this museum. This exhibit you're about to see is all about splatter paintings. That means you'll find paintings that were made by throwing the paint at the canvas instead of using a brush. I decided to create this exhibit because I always thought this style of painting creates colorful and exciting works of abstract art that are fun and interesting to look at. I hope you enjoy your visit to my museum and I hope to see you again soon. Um, class, that should be all of the information that you need to complete your museum up until this point. Remember, you are inserting your seven artworks that you found, so two here, two here, you're leaving this room empty for your artwork, and three artworks here. You'll complete your information slides, so one, two, three, four, this is number eight, so make sure you leave eight empty, that's yours, and then five, six, and seven. It looks like um, slide six and seven did not get the info prompts here, um, but that's okay. You should know the same three things that go in six and seven. And the last slide is your resources, which you should have already uh, used or had access to. So that's everything that I had to show you in this video. Um, thank you for following along and have fun creating your own virtual exhibits.